Hello everyone, my name is Eric. With me today we have Nick Botello. One and only. The train guy. <laughs> and you are watching Oakland Tobacconist. Uh, I think the last time that we had you on the show was the first year we opened. Yeah, it was... I think it was like October or September. Yeah, it was... Because it was during apple season. Uh -huh. uh, my second season working here. It's Yeah, it was within like two or three months of you opening. Yeah. So... Yeah. And we were actually outside at the time. Yeah. Now we've upgraded. We're, That's right. We're inside. We have fancy logos. Right. Fancy yeah. logos. Bigger humidors, bigger, happier people. He yes. smile. He wasn't smiling last time. Today we are smoking. You have not had this cigar, have you? No, I have not. This is the Iron Horse. This is one of our house blends, the Corojo 99. Uh, and part of the reason is because Nick here is a huge inspiration of where we came up with the names. So I think we will get get it lit. We'll see kind of your first impressions, and then we'll go from there. I definitely get the cedar when I just do the draw without lighting it, and also. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's go ahead and get it lit up. We'll get it toasted. And... It's almost sweet, like not a not a bad sweet, but a good sweet. Right, right. Like a, almost like a southern sweet tea kind of thing, which I dig. I think you'll notice in the beginning it has a little bit of pepper, and then it molds to more of that sweetness that you're talking about. Yeah, it's got almost like a toasty element to it, but like I said, a little bit of spice, a little bit of pepper, cedar wood, earth goodness. The spice is there, but it's not super overpowering mm -hmm. of the cedar and the earthiness. Mm -hmm. You want a little bit of earthiness, you know, and that more, I don't want to say woodsy flavor, because that's not the impression I want to give. But it's almost that cedary flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like, yeah. I mean, I mean, anyone who knows it's been in your humidor, I mean, they walk in and they just go, you know, they've never been there before, they're just astounded, you know, at the amount of cedar you put in there. Yeah. So, uh, out of our Cedar Car Cigar line, you've had the Ash Cat. Yes. This is the Iron Horse, and you have not had the Night Owl. This one's going to be kind of in the medium side as far as strength. Nothing too crazy. I think the last time you were on the show, we smoked a Flor Las Dias by my father. Yes. That one was really good. good I really like that. Do you mind giving a bit of, like, background history on kind of these names that were chosen and mm -hmm. what that kind of meant? So... Just like with any industry that you have, um, railroad being, you know, railroaders had their own slang and their own terms for some things. Um, some people, you know, they there's more commonly known ones. People know Iron Horse or Hit the Ground Running, you know, things mm. like that. But then there's some more um, uncommon ones yeah. that people don't quite know because they've fallen out of use with modern railroaders. But back, you know, in the days of the steam locomotive and, you know, when railroads were the primary way to get across the country. Um, railroaders use these terms all the time. And one of my personal favorites, um, because that's what you start off as on a steam locomotive, is Ash Cat. Um, and Ash Cat is a steam locomotive's fireman, because um, up until probably about the early 1900s, late, late 1890s, the only fuel for a steam locomotive was wood or coal. A lot of, a lot of terms that um, came out of railroading really originated way back in like the 1880s or the 1890s. Okay. Um, one term that we use a lot in the railroading industry um, to indicate that everything's good to go and that, you know, we can proceed is highball. And okay. that, yeah, that comes from back in the 1880s when a train was, before we had electronic signals or mechanical signals, at each station there would be a post probably about 10 or 15 foot tall with two pulleys on it with a cable running between them. And on one side of this cable was a big orange ball. Okay. And when the um, telegrapher in the station got word that the train was safe to proceed, he would go out and raise this ball. So if the ball was high, you could go. Oh, uh, okay. So. Okay. So, so you have Ash Cat. Iron Horse is basically alludes to like a... A, a steam locomotive, yeah. Okay. The term Iron Horse was first coined. Um, but that's been in use since probably the 1870s when okay. uh, railroads first started making their way across the Midwestern and the Western United States. A night owl is any um, any late night passenger train or freight train that's running between dusk and dawn. Um, okay. Generally, these were more often freight trains, you know, depending on where they were going. 
but running at night up until the uh, introduction of electric headlights in you know the widespread adoption of those in the late 1890s, early 1900s, running at night was actually fairly dangerous because all you had was kerosene lanterns. You know, there's a big, yeah. there'd be a big box on the front of the locomotive which held the kerosene reservoir and the actual like wick and lamp. Just like if you you know had a kerosene lantern or even less related to like a tiki torch at your house. If there was a small little branch line like the one that I'm about to go uh, work on, um, the train that ran on that that really gained in popularity was a train called the Silverton Mixed because they had to haul a good amount of freight and materials into and out of the town of Silverton, Colorado, but they also still were legally obligated to provide passenger service to Silverton. Okay. So they would just stick a couple passenger cars onto the back of this freight train and call yeah. it a mixed. Part of the reason we want to make sure we got Nick on the show is because you are headed far from California. Yes, I am. Uh, tomorrow, actually, I moved to uh, the Durango, Colorado area. Um, I was hired on as a brakeman with the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad, which has been an almost continuous operation between the towns of Durango and Silverton since 1882. Now, I mean, forgive me as far as like not understanding completely the geography of Durango and such, but is it a pretty high elevation? Durango's at about 6,300 feet, if okay. I remember correctly. Okay. Yeah. And then Silverton is up at 9318. I believe. Wow. Yeah. So there's a, it's, I mean, it's a 45 mile um, railroad one way from Durango to Silverton, but I believe for the first that maybe probably the first 10 or 15 miles out of Durango, it's almost flat land as you um, traverse the Animus Valley. Okay. So, What is the oldest operating train that's in that company that you're going to? I believe the oldest operating car is a private car. It's a parlor car called the Nomad, and it was built in the late 1870s. And it's not a car that just any passenger can book a ticket on. It's a special car that you have to um, basically reserve in advance and it, was, it wasn't meant for the general public. It was meant for company executives or high-class businessmen at the time. It was outfitted with large plush seats, um, a small little kitchen so that a car attendant could prepare drinks and snacks and things like that nice. for whoever had the car. And it has an observation platform on the back that way whoever's riding can go sit on the back of the train and watch this absolutely gorgeous scenery just pass by at the top speed of 20 miles an hour. Getting into the Iron Horse. What are your yes. thoughts? I really like this one. This one is burning really well. It's got a nice even burn to it. Mm -hmm. Granted, I'm still within the first third, but right. I'm, I'm already getting a gradual kind of increase in flavor as I get farther down the stick. And that's what I'm really happy about with this one is that it's nice. not like, oh, you know, you've gotten past the first half and then boom, here's something completely different than the yeah, second yeah, yeah. half. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Nick, for joining us and best of luck to you. Thank you, sir. And thanks for the education. It's always great to have you here. I try. Make certain that you come back at some point and we'll film it up. I'll, we'll see your review of the trains. Over yes. Or, or you come to Colorado. We do. We go on location. That's true. We, we that know too. how much of a film buff you are. And if all the movies <laughs> filmed out there, you'd love it. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, and thanks for joining us. If you want to check out Iron Horse Cigars, that is with our Cedar Car Cigar line, our personal blends, go on our website and you can find them there. Thanks again uh, for watching. For now, uh, I'm Eric. This is Nick. And thanks for watching Oakland Tobacconist.